Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explained. Today we're going to be looking at the new Windows Terminal, a quick overview and review of the app and some tips about how you can customize it. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so here we are inside the new Windows Terminal, and when you first open it up, you get by default a Windows PowerShell. Now, I'm not going to be going into the differences today or a tutorial about PowerShell or about the command prompt. We're going to talk about this Windows Terminal program. Now, if you notice here, it's got a tab at the top, and of course, there's a plus next to it, and like in a web browser, you can click on it and you now get a second Windows PowerShell. So here's a second, here's a third, and then you click on it again and you get another one. And of course you can click the X's to get rid of them. But the real magic starts when you click on this down arrow here, because not only can you run a Windows PowerShell, you can run the more traditional command prompt, which of course has its roots back in the old MS-DOS days. And so now notice we've got a PowerShell here and a command prompt here, so you can switch between them. In fact, you can also start up, I've got a Windows subsystem for Linux installed, I can start up here and run uh, Ubuntu. So now I've got PowerShell command and Ubuntu. And of course there are keyboard shortcuts for all of these if you look here control shift 1 control shift 2 and so on so if I now press uh, control shift 3 you'll see we now get a second Ubuntu uh, sh uh, shell up there so now we've got Windows PowerShell command and then two of those and then you can do that with all the other ones there according to that little list there and to close them you can actually use uh, control shift W so you don't have to click the X you can just get rid of them like that now, one of the other great features of this is, as well as having tabs, you can actually start these different um, uh, shells inside of panes. So if we actually press Alt and Shift and Plus, then notice here how it divides everything into two vertically, and we've got a Windows PowerShell on the left and on the right. And in fact, if you do Alt and Shift and Minus, then it does it horizontally. So you can actually start to divide these up however you like. And you know, you can really kind of knock yourself out here going, you know, deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole. And all of these are all actually working uh, PowerShells. Now, by default, it comes up with a PowerShell every time you do this. And I'm gonna show you some things about how to change that in just a few moments. Now, it's also possible to make some configuration uh, of the uh, Windows terminal. And if you go down here to this little drop down menu and then to settings, you won't actually get up a, a GUI which allows you to set things, you get a text file. Here it is in Notepad. It's actually settings.json. And in here you can edit the way the uh, Windows terminal behaves. So let's do that now and let's start to change some of the things and we can see how that works. So the first thing you'll notice here at the top here, it says default profile. What's a profile? Well, they're listed here. And we can see actually it's PowerShell, Command, the Windows Terminal for uh, Subsystem for Linux and the Windows Terminal for uh, Azure. So if you notice this 615C54, that's the same as this big number here. So basically it's saying the default would always be to start up a PowerShell. Now you might not want PowerShell to be default. I actually like Ubuntu to be the default on mine. So I'm gonna now cut and paste the big long uh, unique global identifier there and put it into there. And now when we save that, if we now go back to the PowerShell here and we click the plus, notice that we now get a uh, Ubuntu coming up. And the same, if we now do Control Alt uh, plus and how it gets divided in half, notice now it's giving me a Ubuntu shell rather than uh, a PowerShell. So I've changed the default now so that it comes up to be the one that I actually like the most. And if we notice here on this uh, little menu, PowerShell is first, Command is second, Ubuntu is third. Now we can actually change the order of this menu. So we go back into the settings and you look here, the order is basically defined from what you have here. So I'm going to take the Ubuntu and do a bit of cut and paste and I'm going to put it back here now at the top so that actually it is Ubuntu that comes in first. Now one thing to always note with these JSON files is the commas. You don't need a comma. Look, this com there's no comma here at the end of false because it's the last item. So always work out whether you need a comma there 
okay? But you don't need a comma here. So when you're editing this file and you're moving things around, always see what you need to do about the commas. And also, I don't actually use uh, Azure Cloud Shell at all, so I'm gonna set this to hidden to be true, and don't forget the comma there. So now when we save that, we can actually go over to here, and when we click on here, actually I've only got three, because we hid one of them, and the uh, Ubuntu is the first one on the list. So I quite like that. So now I can do Control Shift 1 and I get another uh, Ubuntu up. Of course, it's also the default because we changed that a moment ago. Now, one of the things that, that you do a lot in the terminal is cut and paste. So, for example, if we did our, a more of uh, etc slash OS release, here's some text. And let's say I wanted to cut and paste this into, you know, into a question or into an email or something. You In this Windows terminal, you select it and then you have to right hand click on it. That will make the selection go away and it's now copied it to the clipboard. And if you then do a right hand click again, it does a paste. So it's a two step thing. You can do a select it and then right hand click to copy and then right hand click again to paste. And you can just keep pasting that now uh, as much as you want. But I actually, I prefer the way that you, it works inside of Putty. Uh, Simon Tathan's great uh, secure shell program for Windows. And that is that the moment you select it, it's also copied and you can change that inside of Windows Terminal. So if we go to the settings again, and what you can do is you can set in here, inside this, this set of kind of globals up here, before you get to the profiles, we can add in one now that says this, uh, copy on select, true. Okay, and so now the way that works is that if I want to select something here, it's now automatically copied. Let's select something different so you know that I'm selecting something new. Here we go, do the 18 to the Bionic Beaver. Okay, and now right hand click it, paste straight away. I didn't have to do two right hand clicks. I can now just select and then cut and paste. Select actually makes the copy happen and then I can paste uh, as much as I need to. Now, if you do use the Windows subsystem for Linux or you are interested in Linux at all, then you might find this bundle interesting, the Linux Power User Bundle. You get five different courses here, including Linux for Beginners, Linux Command Line Essentials, and Linux Alternative to Windows Applications. And that is quite an interesting topic in itself. And they are all here. Look at this, 22 lessons, two hours of content, nine lessons, one hour, six hours of content, 67 lessons. This is everything you're gonna to need to get yourself uh, familiar with Linux and then when you start up the, a terminal tab with the Windows subsystem of Linux you'll know exactly what to type in. You can get the deal by going to the link on the screen which will also be in the description. There are lots of other things that we can change. So for example, if we go back here into the settings, we can fiddle around with things in the individual uh, profiles here. So let's fiddle around with something. Let's set something here inside of the uh, inside of the uh, Ubuntu one. I'm gonna use this thing here, use acrylic. This is basically a way of setting uh, a transparency on the background. So now, when we go into a Windows terminal, there we go, there is coming through some transparency. That's actually the photo I've got on the Windows desktop. There we go, there you can see it. And there we are back again, you can see it's transparent through there. So it's giving you this uh, kind of, uh, uh, they, you, they say the word acrylic, this way of seeing through the window and seeing what's on the background, but it's obviously it's, it's out of focus, it's blurred. So you can do that, and if you like that, you can keep it. If you don't like it, you can just get rid of it here in the settings, very easy to do. Another one that uh, is quite fun is this, you can use a, a, a retro terminal effect. So again, we'll stay inside of the Ubuntu one, we'll get rid of the acrylic one, and now we'll use this use a, a retro terminal effect. Now, I will be leaving links to where all these different commands are documented. You can go and read them on Microsoft's website so you can know exactly what you need to type. And so now, as we can see here, is look at this. So this is just like using the old kind of terminals for the CRT with the black lines through it there. I, I think that's quite a neat effect. I don't know if I could use it long term. I think that might become a bit annoying. However, that's quite interesting uh, there. So you can, you can fiddle around with things like that. And also each um, uh, profile can have its own color scheme. So for example, if we now scroll down to where our PowerShell is, we can actually set in 
a new color scheme. And again, the list of the color schemes are on Microsoft's website. I will leave a link to that in the description. And now if we started up a new PowerShell, we can see I've got a different color scheme. This is the, the, one, the one that's selected there, Campbell PowerShell, and that's different to what we had before. So all these things can be set and configured. Uh, to meet the colors and the background and the things however you want. In fact, talking of background, you can actually set a background image. So let's do that again for the uh, Ubuntu one. Let's turn off that uh, special effect. And now we're gonna paste in three lines here. Again, this is all uh, covered in Microsoft's documentation. I'll put this here at the bottom. And so the first one says that I'd like a background image and then it points to a file in users, Gary downloads, terminal ubuntu bg.jpg a jpeg that i've downloaded notice that you need to use backslash backslash okay so the escaping it's called to keep those uh, slashes uh, in there background image stretch mode will make it full and then i'd actually like it to be a bit uh, uh transparent only half transparent so now when we save that we start up a new one. There we go. There's that background image that I picked. And it's not the same as the background image on my desktop. This is different to the acrylic mode. Okay, so this is what we actually see now always as the background to uh, that window. But it's different for each one. Doesn't change it for that one. Doesn't change it for command. If I start up uh, command here. Okay, that's not that. It only did it in the profile that we changed it in. Which of course was inside of the Ubuntu one. Now I've got one other quick tip and then that's it for our review and customization. And that is that as you saw, when we keep creating new panes, as we were doing earlier on, it's gonna give me my default one, but that doesn't allow me to kind of create a nice thing where I've got, you know, different panes uh, and then I can have actually four or five different panes on one tab. I actually end up with just the Ubuntu ones or just the PowerShell ones. So there is a quick keyboard binding that you can use which goes down here in the binding section. What it basically says is that when you do a new pane, you duplicate the shell that it already that it came from. Okay, so you can put that in here like this. Uh, because this is a list, we can actually put these on separate lines if we want to, like this. Kind of nicely bit of formatting. Now notice here the key binding for this is Alt Shift D. So D for duplicate. So now here inside PowerShell, if I do Alt Shift D, I'll get another PowerShell here to the right. If I started up a Ubuntu one and did Alt Shift D, I'll get another uh, Ubuntu one. If I had another command prompt and I did Alt Shift D, I get another command prompt. So it's a way of splitting it up, not just the default one, you actually now get a copy of what you had before, which is uh, quite useful if you are, particularly if you use one, one shell more than you use any other. Okay, that's about it. So this is available from Microsoft's uh, store. It's a free download. You can store it on Windows 10. That's it, my name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like this kind of content, well, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.